Hi and welcome back to the series of videos on the Canon EOS 500D T1i and Kiss X3. Uh, continuing on with video 18 now, uh, again looking at the Canon Digital Photo Professional software, uh, which you get along with the camera, um, the 500D T1i or Kiss X3. Um, in the last video, uh, we covered the general layout of this screen, including how you would change the view, um, be it small thumbnails, medium, or thumbnails with information, which I have selected here, and also the folder structure. I gave you a quick tip at the end of the last video um, about bookmarks. Um, another one, um, which I'll, I'll cover now because it's relevant to the managing, managing the images, is the collections tab here, which I have three images in. I'll just snow to that. And this is a collection that I've created. So say, for example, if I've got a big list of images that I'm working on here or trying to select, I can say, right, okay, well, I want to work on these few and I want that one to go into a collection so I can right click add to collection or control and G and that's now got four images in so you can actually call down that big list of images that you can get and manage them a little better and say look these are my selected images that I'm going to concentrate on make a few changes to and then output to JPEG or TIFF um, you know to then email to a friend's family to send to a client or what have you okay so you can use collections to make that a little bit quicker for you Okay, if I go back to folder view, um, I'm going to uh, work on the image of the leaf here. And we're going to look at the JPEG image first. So to do that now, what we can do, we can bring up the toolbar to have a quick look at the information. Now, this isn't a raw image, so it started on the raw tab there. There's no information. If I actually select a raw file, which is the same picture same exposure but the raw version of the image then I get the information there for the raw file so we'll go back to the JPEG and we can now look at the red green blue tab here and um, which shows us the red green blue channels the histogram and also changes that we can make for brightness contrast hue saturation and sharpness so I'm not going to go into those details now in this window so we'll come out of that and I'm going to edit image window which is this button here Okay, so we'll open up a larger preview. I'll bring up the toolbar again, and here we have that same JPEG file and the toolbar that we saw before, along with a few other additional um, options or tools that we can use. Now we can actually zoom in if we want to to assess sharpness to 50% view, 100 or 200. Uh, this will be, like I say, used to assess sharpness, used to make changes to. Um, noise reduction um, because you'll see artifacts that will start to show or softening of the image a little easier in the larger views from there. Now a couple of things that I'll show you it's quite handy actually on the Canon Digital Photo Professional you can actually turn on the auto focus point um, information AF point there by pressing alternate and L or clicking this option there. Now this shows you the, the auto focus points you would see through the viewfinder on the 500D or these square boxes rep these square boxes represent those and I was using the center or auto focus point and I was focused on that point there on the leaf quite handy when you're dealing with portraits or certain images where you're using a wide open aperture or you're dealing with a shallow depth of field you can actually assess where you've actually locked focus and uh, when you took the shot we can also turn on as well um, highlight alerts and shadow alert as well and I'll show you an example of what they do if we bring the brightness down you, there we go we see that it goes blue and that's telling us now it's crushing the blacks okay we have no information now and it's actually even coming onto the image or the leaf there if I go the other way okay it does the opposite it goes red which tells us now we're clipping the highlights or the whites so it's become overexposed and we're losing detail in the leaf there now if I actually remove the highlight alert you'll see that quite clearly We've, I mean this is all overexposed now but we have some detail still there but moving down in towards the front or the tip of the leaf here very very little detail remains okay so we will just oops, bring that back to zero as it was like so okay so they're quite handy features now just to cover this toolbar section here and again we're working with a JPEG file now just to clarify a JPEG file 
Um, it, again, I covered this in my RAW vs JPEG in video 14 in the series. A JPEG file is a compressed image file. Compare it if you like to an MP3 file to when you compare it to a master audio CD. You know, basically to make that MP3 file as small as it is so it can be thrown on your phone, uh, you know, or to other portable devices, then it has to throw information away to do so. And that's essentially what JPEG does. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's a, a bad thing to shoot in JPEG. You may prefer shooting in JPEG because you don't want to deal with raw files. Because obviously you have to process them and then convert them to a JPEG or a TIFF. Um, but you, um, the results generally are better when you do shoot in raw. So it's just worth bearing in mind you've not got as much information in the file to play with. Now the histogram here, which is this graph if you like, that you can see is showing the blue, red and green channels. Zero value here is your shadow, so that's the dark dark parts of the image. Along the middle here is going to be your midtones, and 255 value here is your highlights. Okay. Uh, the 255 value here will tell you when you're clipping information in the particular color channels. So 255, you would see a histogram coming down to this or maybe even going beyond it and bunching up over here if you had an image of say a landscape on a really overcast day and you've got a really bright sky so the sun's behind the clouds you know trying to pump light through there and your cloud just look your sky just looks washed out so changes that we can make um, to a JPEG file we can increase contrast okay well watch what that's doing to the black levels there so it's worth having those warnings on Okay, and you can change the hue or the temperature or feel of the image. It's made it warmer, and that's made it colder. I mean, the colors start to look unnatural when you do that, so we'll click that return button there to to uh, undo what we've just done. Saturation, we can slide that down to take color out to convert to a black and white image, or we can add saturation. Um, to make an image pop or become more saturated or to make it more vibrant I mean that's far too much there and you can see look the green channel starting to get up to nearly clipping there and um, so we're, we're, we're quite we're pushing it quite far there sharpness you can change by sliding up or typing in a value you can change you can type a value into any of these boxes and um, to make changes to sharpness although I do recommend when you do click on 100% view so it's a little easier to see what effect your sharpening is having on the image. So if you get too far you get these little speckles or artifacts in the image. So you may want to dial it back just until they start to disappear. Like so. Now you do have to sharpen for purpose, so depending on how big you're going to make the image, you know, be it for a small image on the internet or you're printing it to A4, 6 by 10 um, you do have to sharpen to purpose, but it's worth going into a 100% view to see what result that you're getting and consider the size of the actual final output of the image as well. Um, noise reduction and lens alterations limited to what we can do here because we've not got a raw file in at the moment but we can reduce noise on an image using these sliders here uh, but what that what you'll find that will do is it will make the image appear slightly softer so you've got to try and balance that out a little bit um, to reduce noise Noise reduction you generally only want to use if you're shooting at high ISOs. So if you're shooting handheld and it's starting to go quite dark, you open open your lens up or open your aperture up and you increase the ISO to maintain a shutter speed that's usable. Um, unfortunate side effects of that is more noise, but you can deal with that here. So that's just a quick look at this screen when dealing with a JPEG file. So now what we'll do, we'll go to the raw version of the file, click on the edit image window, and this is raw image. A lot more information to deal with now. I'm going to tab which is all native. Okay, we can still bring on the AR focus point, and we can still bring on um, highlight and shadow alert as well. Uh, watch what happens here if I bring the brightness down. So I'm adjusting the same slider. In fact, we'll do this on the red, green, blue. So it's the same as what we did before. Okay. You've got a little bit more leeway will actually start to come in go to black okay although we are still losing it now if we actually go onto the raw panel which is the better way to do it and we change the brightness adjustment within the raw file 
Boom, look at that. It's still holding the shadow, some shadow detail. It's actually starting to lose it around about there. And if we go up to the highlights, all the way up there, whoop, all just started to lose it there. Okay, so RGB is dealing on the JPEG side. If we're dealing with RAW, you've got far more flexibility. And you can also, after the fact, change your white balance. Now, white balance is where you would set the color temperature or set the camera's white balance for the color temperature of light that you're dealing with, be it indoors, say incandescent um, desk lamps, indoor lighting, fluorescent tube lighting, um, you're dealing with flash for studio flashes, flash guns, daylight, cloudy, shade, and you'll see those on those settings on your camera. And we can actually change this after the fact now because we've shot raw. So if we've picked the wrong white balance and so we ended up with, uh, hang on, let me pick something that's going to make it look horrible. That's completely wrong. That's too cold. Oh, I, damn, I had the wrong uh, balance set. You can come up here and automatically pick the correct one um, you would want to use as well. Okay, and you can also change the picture style in RAW. So if we shot it in standard picture style. That's the one I generally use just to keep it quite flat and neutral. Oh, we do have a neutral one there, but that's a little bit too flat, I find. So I'll leave it on standard, and um, what we can change the picture style, and you'll see the sort of changes to contrast and uh, saturation depending on what style that you use. But again, we're doing this after the fact. We can change contrast on the new. so again, it's quite subtle. The change, slight change to highlights, bring up the shadows slightly, and we can. Uh, increase color saturation to make it pop a little bit like so and then we can add a sharp setting to our liking. I think four is probably just a little bit too much but we could go on to the red, green, blue and then make more subtle changes there. And we can also use auto lighting optimizer even though we had that option turned off in the camera when I took the picture we can click that and it makes the change because it's dealing with the raw file, there's more data there and you can change it from its low state to strong settings. So if we look, remember how, more, how much more flexible that raw is, we can change noise reduction, we can bring up that preview window again um, as well to look more closely at the effects um, that this is having on the image. If you look at it go quite soft there, we add more noise reduction to the image. Um, like so, lens correction and aberration correction I'll cover in a, in a slightly later video because I'm going to actually shoot something um, to suit that feature um, a little better. I'll probably use a wide angle lens to get some distortion to deal with and shoot a slightly different subject. Okay, so that's just a quick look at the edit window or edit image window, should I say, and some of the options that it gives you. Um, comparing JPEG and the raw options as well. Um, for video 18 on the Canon EOS 500D T1 and KISS X3 series. Um, I'm going to stick with using the majority of these images for these um, these tutorial videos on the software unless I need to shoot something different just to a certain feature and option that will help me explain it a little better as well. If you have any questions about what I've shown today um, then please just chuck me a message on YouTube via the website in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer that for you. So thank you very much for watching and I will be with you very soon for the next video in the Canon EOS 500D T1i and KISS X3.